Welcome to Sage's Cottage, a place that holds a really special part in my heart. My name is Gail Rogers, the property was built by my great great grandfather John Sage and I'd love to share some of my personal stories and history about this property with you. Benjamin Baxter was one of the first European settlers in this area. From County Cork in Ireland, he arrived in Melbourne in 1837. He quickly took over a lease of 15,000 acres in what is now known as the Muraduck and Langwarren area. He was a very, very well connected man who had interests that took him right across Victoria and in the end led him to engage the services of John Sage. In 1840, as a 19-year-old, John Sage drove a mob of cattle all the way from Port Phillip to Baxter's property. And he must have done something incredibly good because he was then employed as the first manager of the property. In the ensuing years, there was a blossoming romance between John Sage and one of Benjamin Baxter's daughters, Maria. And they were very happily married in 1852. Shortly after, John built Sage's Cottage as their marital home and unbelievably, he and Maria raised eight children here. John and Maria Sage were blessed with incredibly long lives for the era. As a result, their family were able to hang on to the property for over 100 years. From the 1970s to the year 2000, the property operated as a restaurant followed by a cafe. I have great memories of my sister's 16th birthday and family get-togethers on the lawn hosted by Camillo and Alistair, the proud owners of Baxter Provender, a beautiful colonial restaurant. During the same period, the Victorian Conservation Trust purchased the property in 1976. Sage's Cottage is a fine example of an early settler's country farm. It has several features of heritage significance. The cottage itself originally consisted of three separate buildings, which over time have been joined together by a beautiful veranda, not only for convenience, but no doubt to keep the inhabitants dry. Significant to the building is this vernacular cladding, which shows vertical timber slabs rather than traditional horizontal, now evident in only a few properties around Victoria. Stringy bark battens sourced locally have been used to hold up the veranda, and there is still evidence of the shingle roofing. The whole veranda is framed with a beautiful 80-year-old wisteria. Also of heritage significance is this very uncommon plum hedgerow and one of my favourite places as a little girl for playing hide and seek, behind me, the Avenue of Pines. I may well be sitting on the most expensive dunny in Australia and I must say I've thoroughly enjoyed watching the restoration of this heritage listed outhouse right down to the importation of handmade nails from England. It's just a fine example of Wallara's commitment to the preservation of Sage's Cottage. My dad, William Rogers, spent much of his childhood growing up here and later on actually helped old Uncle Tom Sage with the farming. He and my mother had such a love for this mesmerising, tranquil place that they now both rest peacefully in the Rose Garden. Wandering around the property today has brought back wonderful memories for me. The gardens are looking absolutely stunning. The cottage and other buildings have been lovingly maintained and renovated. And like me, I know Dad would be absolutely thrilled with what's going on here. Sage's Cottage has a rich history and with the new owners an exciting future. Phil's going to tell you more about that. Great to be with you. Okay, so Wallara first heard about Sage's Cottage in 2012 when our clients were coming here to volunteer. At that time it was owned by Menzies, a really well-known charity uh, service in this area that worked with disadvantaged children and they'd bought the property and held it for about a decade and done animal therapy and done amazing things on the farm. 
when we first saw it, I remember being amazed at the potential for us to teach our skills to the people we support around areas like horticulture, hospitality and general life skills. We're really excited about opening up the farm to the public with the cafe, guided tours and animal experiences. But the big vision is to add some new buildings to allow us to triple our current capacity because demand for places here is exceeding what we can offer. This is all part of the journey towards becoming Australia's most inclusive farm and a showcase for inclusive tourism on the Mornington Peninsula. For more information on how you can get involved in the farm, please go to the Sages Cottage website.